Go on then. Oh, that feels so good. That sounds so good. Hello everyone and welcome to another video on day 542 in my BMW M140i. Total mileage from new right now is 30,652 and of those I've driven 20,592 of them. Today's video is a final comparison of my last two cars. Boring! Done that to death. You're just milking it. Move on. They're different cars. I hear that a huge amount in the comments whenever I dare compare this to my previous car, my Focus RS. So why am I doing it then? Well, to me, simply, it's a relevant comparison. Badge, drivetrain and engine aside, they're remarkably similar cars. They're a similar price. They were both 35K-ish when new. They have similar power. Book power for this thing is 335 horsepower, 340 PS I think it is, and book power for the Focus RS was 350. So they have similar power, and that gives them similar performance. Both do 0 to 62 miles an hour, or 0 to 100 kilometers an hour, in about four and a half seconds, and both top out at about 170 miles per hour. And they're a similar size and class of car. Now, having said that, the Focus RS has a bit more cabin space, a bit of a larger footprint on the road, a slightly smaller boot, and weighs about 150 kilograms more than this thing does. But otherwise, they are absolutely comparable. The comparison of the two cars is valid. Well, mainly, I'm making it because I enjoy making videos. It's fun for me to look back over the last three years that I've had these two cars. And right now, in the somewhat strange times that we find ourselves within, it's been a good project to have. Also, I'm more qualified than most people to make a comparison between the two cars. I've got real-world, first-hand experience of both cars over a very similar time and a very similar mileage. Now, I've touched on how the two cars compare in the past, kind of specifically costs and lap times, but I've never gone through all aspects of the cars, the entire kind of package, if you like, in one video and now that I've just passed 534 days in this car I thought it was time to wrap that whole episode up so in this video that's exactly what I'm going to do now if you think boring you know you're one of those and that doesn't interest you then thanks for watching and goodbye if however it does interest you if it helps anyone out anyone considering either car as a potential car that they're looking to buy, then to me that's a good thing. Now, on to the two cars. For the avoidance of doubt, what exactly am I comparing here? Ford's 2017 Mark III Focus RS, which I bought new on the 11th of May 2017. I owned it for 534 days and covered 19,300 mostly glorious miles before I traded it in against this car as a straight swap with no cash either way. And this car is a March 2017 manual three-door BMW M140i. That trade-in happened on the 26th of October 2018. So I'm going to run through and compare, giving my personal thoughts and opinions on both cars on 15 separate points. And I'm going to go through those in order of how important they are to me. First will be the things that matter the least to me that I'm not really that bothered about and then I'll finish off with those things that mean everything. Before I start though, unfortunately I have to make clear that what I'm about to say are my personal thoughts and opinions from owning both cars. How I rank them will be based upon my ownership, my needs, my desires and my experience in cars. Now you of course will have different needs, desires, and experiences in cars. So you may very well come to a completely different conclusion. There's nothing wrong with that. 
they are just thoughts and opinions after all. So please just bear that in mind before you start going full auto in the comments. First up is the infotainment system, the interface that you have with the car through the screen, the controls that you have on it and so on. Now that one for me goes firmly to the BMW. The SYNC 3 system on the RS was good, far better than SYNC 2 which I've got in that thing there which is clunky and awful. SYNC 3, yeah that was quite good but there is just so much more that you can do with the um, iDrive system that this car comes with. So that's a very firm point to the BMW. Second is cabin quality. Now, I've never really been a fan of cabin quality or I've never certainly placed it high on the list of importance. But being in here, feeling how this thing is built, put together and everything else, knowing what this thing's now like, with 30,000 miles and knowing what my Focus RS was like with 19,000 miles on it. Again, this one has to go to the BMW. The, the build quality in here is quite a far way away from that of the Focus RS. Now we have sound, the audio system. Now this has the Harman Kardon. Um, my Focus RS had the Sony 10 speaker system with the subwoofer upgrade. I'm no great audiophile, they both sound quite good. I think this might just edge it, but I'm gonna call it a draw. So that's half a point each. Next, looks and image. This one's a tricky one for me. I like the fact that this car looks like a 116 diesel. I also like the fact that my Focus RS was a bit shouty with its aggressive front end and its um, 19 inch wheels and the big spoiler on the back and the you know pops and bangs and everything else i'm an accountant what are you going to do I, I like the subtlety but i also like a bit of yeah in your face so i'm going to call this one a draw another draw that's half a point each and next on my list is costs of ownership well i bought the focus rs new so naturally i took pretty sizable whack over the uh, period of ownership in terms of depreciation. I'm going to put some details up, so get ready with the pause button if you want to see these. But here's my BMW M140i costs over 534 days and the Focus RS as well. And you can see that on that, the BMW is a clear winner. Practicality. That's something which is important to me. When I was actually originally looking for this car, I was looking for a five door because I have a couple of young girls, although they're kind of, you know, young adults now. But practicality is important, hence me wanting a hatchback and the M2 never being a consideration. But the rear doors of the Focus, it was slightly bigger inside, a bit more space in the back. Um, that just edges it in the Focus's favor. Now we get onto the important things, the things that matter to me as a driver. And firstly, I want to talk about the dials and the driver information that's available. Now, in this car, you can get real-time tyre temperatures and pressures, real-time graphs of MPG if that floats your boat. But the thing that this doesn't have, which is absolutely crucial as far as I'm concerned, considering it's got 360 horsepower, is any temperature information. There's no coolant information. There's no oil information. On the Focus RS, you had water, you had oil temperature, you had oil pressure. That's a pretty significant emission from this car, as far as I'm concerned. So that's a point firmly for the Focus RS. Brakes. How does the car brake? How does it stop? How does it feel while it does it? The Focus RS brakes are far and away the better brakes compared to this car. On track, I didn't get any fade at all. We won't talk about the longevity um, because I've covered that in another video, but actually on track, the way I could brake that car was phenomenal. Everyone that I took out in it commented on how hard the thing slowed itself down. It was incredible. This, you maybe get that for one lap, maybe two, and then you've got to start being careful with the pedal because you start getting a long pedal and they just start going away from you. So for brakes, that one goes to the RS. Now I'm going to talk about driving position. Now, 
I remember the first time I sat in this car when I went to see it at the dealership. I climbed into it and I kind of just dropped down right into it. it almost like when you're going off the bottom step and you think there's another step to go and there isn't or you know you kind of stumble off. Um, it was like that when I got into this because I climbed in and I was kind of expecting to contact the seat and I dropped much further down. The seating position in this is so low compared to the RS. You do feel much, much lower to the ground and there is much more adjustment available, much more in the way of options, seat base angle, the extension on the seat squab, you've got lump, um, inflatable bolsters as well. So driving position um, very, very firmly goes to the BMW. Next we have this thing, the gearbox. Now, the Focus RS has far and away the better shift, but as far as the ratios go, for manual anyway, I appreciate not many 140 owners have a manual box, but the ratios are absolutely spot on. Yes, sixth gear is way too short compared to eighth gear on the ZF eight speed, but it's fifth gear. When you go from fourth to fifth, it's a really close ratio, so the revs hardly drop. And when I was on track and I was accelerating down the back straight at Lavin, it just kept on pulling. And I think that was because of the shorter gear. You got from fourth into fifth at about you know, 120 miles an hour, and it just kept on going. So whilst this one has the better ratios, I still kind of have to give it to the RS because the feel of the gearbox is very mechanical. It's very not notchy at all, because this thing's notchy and imprecise and rubbery, but it's okay, it gets the job done. But the gearbox on the RS was just silky and mechanical. You really felt like gears were engaging when you shifted the lever. So the Focus RS gets the nod from me for the gearbox. And then there's the engine, BMW's three liter straight six, twin scroll single turbo engine and Ford's 2.3 litre EcoBoost again with a twin scroll single turbo. Similar power, similar torque, 350 pounds feet for the Focus, 370 as standard for this. When I had a good solid engine, and I'm not going to talk about the issues I had here, this isn't the video for that, I've done that on other videos. If you want to uh, go and look that up, please feel free. But when I had a good engine in the Focus RS, it made book power. It made 350 horsepower. It made 360 pounds feet of torque. This made 360 horsepower and 395 pounds feet of torque. There's no comparison between the two. The delivery of this thing and the way it gets going from low revs. It's smooth, it's silky, it sounds wonderful. The BMW gets this one. Handling. How do they compare when it comes to handling? Well, this is where we're comparing kind of chalk and cheese because this car at its core is just a 116D with some slightly firmer springs and dampers and a great big engine. So it's never going to set the world on fire. It feels great as a rear wheel drive car. It's got a wonderful balance. The steering's uncorrupted because you've got no power being driven through those front wheels. It feels really, really good. And it does handle really, really well. However, the Focus RS has something going on underneath that just puts it on another level entirely. It's sharp, it's responsive. Every drive felt like an event. So for me, the Focus RS is the clear winner when it comes to just out and out handling, feel, feedback and response. I'm on to the last two now, and second to last is how the cars feel on track. Well, don't think there's going to be any surprise here. The Focus RS gets it. It felt absolutely fantastic on track all day, session after session, lap after lap, just kept carving its way around the circuit. This, bit of a surprise when I first took it out, I thought, oh my goodness, what's going on here? really floaty, really loose, really wobbly, but I eventually dialed into it and I came to trust it and it did go where I wanted it to. You could place it accurately on the circuit. A bit of body roll and, and some movement is actually no bad thing because it lets you know what the car is doing, but it didn't inspire confidence. So on the circuit, 
the Focus RS. Again, a very, very clear winner. And I don't really think that's a surprise considering the intended kind of market that the cars, whilst quite similar, but that the cars were aimed towards. And lastly, how do they feel on the road? How do they compare with their road behavior, their road manners, and what it did for me as a driver? Well, 99.5% of my annual mileage in both cars was on the road, which is why I've placed this one as the most important criteria. What this has is that it's a real Jekyll and Hyde car. If I have the damper set to soft, leave it in comfort mode or eco pro, and it's just a smooth car that you can waft along in. It can be a comfortable cruiser. It can be an absolute ballistic missile when you want it to. The Focus RS could also be a ballistic missile and it did amazing things with that four wheel drive system. Don't get me wrong. but it only had one mode on the road, and that was uh, full out attack, which was mad. Did get a bit tiresome. Again, this is a close one, because the RS is a wonderful, wonderful car to drive, but the, the, the proper dual nature of this car, that it can be a normal car, that it can be something that just wants to tear your face off, BMW gets it. So it's ended up being a very, very close run thing. Could have gone either way. But for now, today, after 534 days in each, that's how I'll rank them. I can sum this whole thing up a bit more succinctly. And that is that if I was to be offered both cars and told, grab the keys to one of them and take it for a drive for two hours, every single time, without question, I would take the Focus RS. This wouldn't get a look in. If it was two hours carving across the South Downs, Focus RS every single time. But ask me to pick one to drive home in and to own, it would be BMW's M140i every single time. It is just the more rounded package of a car. It doesn't have that, you know, absolute nutter nature that the Focus RS had. But it's, it's, it's almost there, it's almost there, and it just does everything else so well. Now before I end this video, on a previous video when I kind of trailed that I was going to be making this video and doing a comparison of the two cars, I did ask if anyone had any things or points that they'd want me to cover. So I've got a few notes here, some people did ask, so I'm just going to quickly run through those now. Username Alex Cat just said, Drag race, all in capital letters. Well, clearly I can't do that, but what I have got, pretty much the only side-by-side -side comparison that I've got that I can go back to, is comparison of both cars driving on the same piece of track, under the same load, at the same speed, at the start of the comparison along the Lavent Strait at Goodwood, from 66 miles an hour up to over 130. How is that? How can you do that with focus? Uh, that's brilliant. <coughs> yeah, I actually did the same lap time in the Mini as in the Porsche. Oh really? Whereas the Mini I couldn't have got any more out of it, the Porsche I could have yeah. got a lot out of it. <coughs> then we have Phil and Dylan and they ask how does the other car driver's attitudes towards the BMW and Ford compare against one another? Well being honest, I can't say I've noticed a difference. From step 0601, they've asked, I wondered what your thoughts were on the ride quality of both. Well, that's, that's an interesting one because they both have switchable dampers, both have a soft setting and a hard setting. And the way that I would kind of explain how they feel is that if you've got one is the softest of the settings across both cars and 10 is the hardest, then one is soft in the BMW and hard in the BMW is four out of 10. Soft in the Focus RS is like a six. 
and hard in the Focus RS is like 10, real teeth rattling stuff. So that kind of says what the ride quality is like. BMW is super soft and kind of medium, but the softer edge of medium. Um, and the Ford is medium plus um, and rock, rock hard. DF asks, is there anything you miss about the RS, Mark? That's a good question. And things that I think I miss, or not things that I think I miss, things that I do miss are the heated steering wheel. I miss the boost gauge. I miss the temperature gauges. I miss the sunroof. I miss Android Auto. I miss the feel of the uh, gearbox. And I have to also say, I miss the pops and bangs. This thing does burble, but it's nothing like it was in the RS. That was an absolute hooligan. Richard One Galvin asks, as an ownership prospect, which of the two vehicles has been the most rewarding to own? Well, that's the BMW. Nicer place to be, more flexibility, and as I said earlier, it's more of a Jekyll and Hyde natured car. Leeds 182 asks, which do you feel more comfortable wearing the gloves in? Well, either actually, although I need them more in this car because of this over fat, squidgy, soft, untextured wheel. So I need them more in this, but quite comfortable wearing them in both cars. Tim H601 asks, which out of the two gives you the wow factor in terms of power delivery, handling, and also which one do you regret selling? Well, for power, it's the BMW gives me the wow factor. For handling, it's the Ford. That, that really delivers on the wow factor. And regrets, well, I've only sold one, clearly, because I'm sat in this one. But the one that I sold, I really, really don't regret selling. PCV3200 asks, compare what they make you feel like when you drive them. The Ford makes you feel alive. This thing, relaxed or scared. And lastly, Alan Lai asks, please compare the feel of the manual transmission from shift of feel to clutch operation. Thanks. Well, I answered the shift feel in my comparison earlier, but the clutch feel, can't really say I've noticed that much difference. I've driven manuals all my life. Just kind of get in and press the clutch and you find the balance point and the bite point and get on with it. So nothing really separates them as far as the clutch feel goes. So that's it for this video. I hope you found it useful or interesting. If you have any comments or opinions or any thoughts, you agree, disagree or otherwise, please leave them below the video in the comments section. If you haven't subscribed yet and you're new here, then please do consider subscribing. Thanks again for watching and most importantly everyone right now, stay safe.